Lots of people have money problems, you guys. And the solution to money problems is actually very simple. Some of you guys were requesting that I make this video after I talked about removing the emotion from your attachment to money or the emotion around not having money or the emotion having that like bad relationship with money where it's like it's like a needy relationship with money. How often do needy relationships work out? <laughs> they don't. And the reason they don't is because one partner cannot stand the idea of constantly having to output so much energy to fill the needs of the other partner. Same thing with money. If you're needy, money is like that 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 partner that's like, I don't have anything to do with this, so you're gonna have to chase me. <laughs> I'm gonna give you guys some good advice here. Some advice that I had to take for myself because I used to be incredibly emotionally attached to money. And sometimes I even still feel myself like inching back towards that. And then I have to like be like, no, everything is fine. Money is a flow state. And I'm gonna teach you how to get to that. By the end of this video, you're gonna learn some things that you can do in order to get out of that state, get out of that negative energy. Now, some of the reasons why people have an emotional attachment to money. Now, I'm gonna go over these reasons because step one is understanding the root problem, where it comes from. It's being introspective. You gotta look within and ask yourself, why do I have this problem? And for the most part, I think you're gonna be, you're gonna fall into one of these categories. That's my thought process. Okay, number one, survival and security. If you grew up in an environment where you didn't have a whole lot of money and money was always talked about in a negative way and there wasn't enough money to put food on the table or enough money to pay the bills or the, the lights were ever shut off in your house and you were scared, that can create trauma and it can create a negative relationship to money, meaning you have a fear of this happening to you in your life now. And if that's the case, then you are constantly gonna be in a state of trying to avoid, trying to avoid a situation, trying to avoid not having money in your bank account, trying to avoid getting a pink slip or you know one of those, those, those things that says, we're shutting off your water or your heat or your, your electricity. You're gonna be in a constant state of avoidance. And I know that some people might look at that and be like, well, yeah, I wanna avoid that stuff. But I'm telling you right now, if you're a successful person, you don't think about avoiding that's a scarcity mentality. You think about having abundance, always having enough of everything to pay your bills. If you guys watched the video that I, I did on my house, when I, I talked to you about how we wrote our letter to ourselves that brought our house to us, it was always in a sense of gratitude and abundance and always in, a, in an emotional state as if we already had it. And I honestly... I don't even, I don't even, re I, I remember writing it, but I don't remember writing it at the same time. I just knew the feeling that I had as I was writing this letter to myself, as my wife and I were writing these le this letter to ourselves, that we were going to have this house someday. And I connected that point with this point. There's usually this timeline. I connected them. It sounds weird. I know that it's super esoteric, but the point is you cannot think in avoidance, you have to think in abundance. Your past experiences with money, your past experiences in your home growing up have probably given, given you the feeling that if you lack money, then you're going to lack status, you're going to lack the basic needs, you're going to, uh, maybe your parents got a divorce because they always fought over money, maybe your siblings are messed up because your parents fought over money. There's so many different things that can negatively impact our mindset. And once those things get stuck in our subconscious, then it's really difficult for us to see money as anything other than I need it in order to avoid. And you have to reverse that. It can't be an avoidance thing. The thing that you may have, been, you may have seen is, is the comparison game. Your neighbor down the street, they always had money. Or a kid that you went to school with, he wore the nice clothes. They were rich. They were loaded. He drove a BMW when he was 16 years old. And you had to drive a Ford Bronco too. Yeah. <laughs> it smelled like burnt oil all the time. And so looking at other people in the state of want and FOMO can create a negative subconscious reaction. And again, that is, I want to avoid the situation of not being able to participate. I remember at school when I was a teenager... I didn't have any money. My parents didn't give me lunch money. I stole food from our lunch line because I didn't have money and I got caught one time and I felt terrible. So I, I wanted to avoid that. Those are situations that I wanted to avoid. Whatever your deep seated root cause of your emotional connection to money is, you need to dig deep and you need to think hard about that. And if you guys feel comfortable with it, share it in the comments below. I'd love to hear some of your stories. Why are you so emotionally connected 
the money. Once you figure out the root cause, then it's easier to reverse that train of thought. Let's talk about money, and I want you to be completely neutral with this. I want you to think about this just logically. What does money do? What is money? Money is a physical representation or a digital representation of value. Do you have value? Absolutely. You have to understand money's role. Recognize that money is a tool and it's a means to an end, not the end itself. It can provide comfort, security, and opportunity, but it's not a guarantee of happiness or worth. One of the exercises that we put ourselves through when we were young too, and we were having going through some of these money challenges and just thinking about money and trying to plan our life and, and talk about how wealthy we would at some point be, one of the thought exercises that we would do is give ourselves the worst case scenario test. And if the worst case scenario didn't kill us, then it wasn't bad. And ultimately one of the things that led to our detachment from the emotional connection to money was that if the worst case scenario was the, was the understanding that if the worst case scenario didn't lead to death of a family member, then my wife and I were strong enough to overcome anything. Even if we lost all of our money, even if we went bankrupt, we were strong enough to rebound from that. A lot of times you guys we were raised in households where our parents got divorced because of money. 24% of divorces are because of financial stress. So if you can make a commitment with your spouse that the worst case scenario is not going to lead to you guys getting a divorce or to you separating your family or splitting of your family, if you can make that commitment early on, then it's easier to de detach yourself emotionally from, from money. And I have this conversation with my wife all the time because sometimes I'll still get money stressed and I'll have to remember that no matter what, my wife is not going to leave me if we go bankrupt. And if that is your root cause, then you can take money and put it over here and it doesn't become this emotional burden. And again, you have to do internal work in order to detach this emotional connection. What are your money beliefs? Do you have limiting beliefs? Our programming gets so wrapped around what other people say that we can or can't do that when we hear things enough, we start to believe it. If I had been in an environment where I was told you're never going to amount to anything unless you go to college over and over and over and over again by everyone around me, what do you think would happen? I would have believed it. What are your money beliefs and what are your personal value beliefs? What are your personal worth beliefs? Is there something in your history that makes you feel unworthy of massive success? That's a deep one. Is there something in your history that makes you feel like you don't have enough value to provide in order to make millions of dollars? Is there something in your history that makes you feel like an imposter, like it's impossible? I've been through all of that stuff. I can definitively tell you that you are no different than Elon Musk, than Mark Cuban, than Ben Shapiro. You know, these guys who are, Ben Shapiro's not a billionaire, but he will be at some point, I almost guarantee it. You're no different than them. They're genius in their own regard. Like you look at Elon Musk, you're like, he's a genius. There are a lot of people who are smarter than Elon Musk who are broke. What Elon Musk figured out was how to use his intelligence and his power to build a team and his power to use leverage to grow billion dollar companies. It's the only difference between Elon and you. You're no different. We both bleed red. Unless you're one of those people who thinks he's like one of those lizard guys like Zuckerberg. There's no difference, you guys. You're just as valuable. I think that the, the thing that you guys probably needed to hear the most was worst case scenario. The worst case scenario thing is worth, I mean, that, that that's what changed my, that is literally what changed my life. Is the worst case scenario going to lead to death? No. Then you can overcome it. Is the worst case scenario going to bankrupt you? Maybe. But you can overcome that. And if, you're, if your spouse is on board with you, then there is nothing to fear. Go after it. Be a champ. I mean, there's a, I, I, I've got a whole bunch of other things on my list. Practice gratitude. Yeah. Gratitude. Like, always be grateful for things. Faith is, faith is powerful. I think a lot of the reason that people have financial issues is because they don't have faith. They don't know how to have faith. Somebody sent me a picture the other day. My friend Marley it says, go after a dream that is destined to fail without divine intervention. I think that most people have faith, but they put faith in the opposite of faith. They put their faith in doubt. Doubt is the same thing as faith. It requires the same amount of energy. You're speculating that something bad is going to happen. Faith is the opposite. And you get what you think about. That's the other thing. Why not 
move forward knowing that there is divine inspiration that is guiding and helping you. That's how the most successful people become the most successful. They don't know how they're going to do it. They just know that they're going to do it. It is, it is extreme confidence in their capability and then also in a divinely inspired plan for them. You talk to most successful people, most people who are millionaires and billionaires, and you ask them about divine nature of some of the serendipitous things that have aligned in order to make them successful, and it'll boggle your mind. That's fascinating stuff. Anyway, you guys, I hope this helps. If you have any questions, you might have some clarifying questions, leave them in the comments below. But I hope that genuinely helps you guys disconnect that emotional connection, that negative emotional connection they have to money. All right, watch this video here, right here, and this video right here. It's probably covering my face right now. Later.